Now let's talk about calculating kurtosis. Um, so kurtosis, let's talk about the main heart of the idea before we get into things. Like skew, you could multiply constants to it. It sort of doesn't matter. This is the heart of kurtosis. Here's my sigma. It's going to be that same distance for each point away from my mean. But instead of cubing it, we're going to raise it to the fourth power. Um, now, when we raise it to the fourth power, we know that we do not care about whether it is on the left side or the right side, right? So that's one thing to note already about kurtosis. It's not counting how many are on one side versus the other side of the mean. Um, so kurtosis already, we know it'll probably be positive because it's going to uh, raise everything to the fourth power. And when you raise something to an even numbered power, it's going to be positive. And then we're going to divide that by s to the fourth power, standard deviation to the fourth power. Now, once again, this is going to always be positive. Standard deviation is already positive. Um, and then we're going to raise it to the fourth power. So kurtosis is um, largely going to be a positive number. Um, the only uh, the only difference between different uh, values of kurtosis might be whatever you, whatever constant they decide to multiply by. Um, frequently, n minus one over n minus one is um, one of the constants. Um, I forget what S Excel does. Excel does something else crazy. We'll figure that out when we get there. Um, but once again, even with kurtosis, you could write it in a number of different ways. You could write it as one over n minus 1 times s to the fourth power, and then put your sum of fourth powers <laughs> here. Sum of quads? I'm not really sure. Right? So instead of sum of squares, we're ra raising it up to the squared squares, right? So um, that's one way of writing it. Another way of writing it is you can make the sigma sign really big, x sub i minus um, the mean to the fourth power over n minus 1 times s to the fourth power, right? But all of these things are the same thing. And once again, this is really the heart of the idea of kurtosis. And uh, one of the reasons it's uh, to the fourth power is, let's think about it. Remember, it's very concerned about being either on the outside or on the inside of the distribution. Are you on the tails or are you at that peak? And by raising it to the fourth power, it makes everybody matter a lot. And especially if you're on the outside, you matter way more than um, if you're on sort of the inside. All right, one more thing to the idea of kurtosis. Now, typically, kurtosis is going to be um, so for a normally distributed function, let me draw it here, for an approximately normal looking distribution, nice bell curve, right? The kurtosis, if you calculate it with some function like this, is going to be three, right? And that's so arbitrary, right? It's just this weird number. Um, and so what they've done is they've made the kurtosis function so that you subtract three from it, so that the normal distribution has a kurtosis of zero, right? Because three minus three is zero. And so that's how you actually get negative kurtosis. It's not because of this function, but it's because you subtract by three. So the lowest kurtosis you could get is negative three. Um, so that's sort of this odd, bizarro thing. Um, I'm not really sure why they decided to normalize it to zero, but I, my theory is that they thought it would be hard for people to remember like above three is like something from normal and below three is something from normal. So they just make you do it in the formula. All right, so 